And we're here with Let Us Play 999, part 39. He lifted Ace up off the floor and laid him on the bed he'd been leaning against. When Junpei turned around, Lotus gave him a look of pity. Well, we really don't have a choice now. We can't let his sacrifice go to waste, right? She wasn't feeling any remorse. Junpei was sure of that. Still, he held no grounds upon which to oppose her. It felt wrong, but he had to agree. Then suddenly, Santa spoke. Yeah, but we're not done choosing yet, are we? Huh? What do you mean? Well, we're, we haven't decided who's going in what door. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. Well, enough of the screwing around. Let's decide. You first, Lotus. Which door do you want? Hold on, let me do something real quick. Four, seven, five, digital red. Alright. I... Um, I want door number eight. It's the same number of, as my bracelet number. Got it. You, you're eight. You're next seven. Which one do you want? I'll take seven. I can't get along with that old lady. What? What did you just say? Her face distorted by rage, Lotus took a step towards seven. He threw up his hands and made a face like a child caught in, with his hand in a cookie jar. Uh, you're going to get it next time. She shot him a glare that would have melted steel and then turned and stalked off. All right, who's next? Santa's gaze moved across the three people left. Finally, they stopped on Junpei. Junpei, which door do you want? At last, Junpei's mind was already made up. I... I think I'm going to go with door seven. Okay, seven it is. All right, then that means June's got to go through eight. What? Why? What? Santa grimaced and muttered angrily to himself, but finally began to explain. If the six of us are going to keep going without leaving anyone behind, there's only three ways we can do it. Plan A, go through 7 with 358 and go through 8 with 467. Plan B, go through 7 with 457 and go through 8 with 368. Plan C, go through 7 with 367 and go through 8 with 458. And that's it. Those are our only options. In other words, 3 and 4 and 7 and 8 can never go through the same doors. You get it now? As Santa finished, June looked over at Junpei, tears welling up at the corners of her eyes. Oh no. You're saying we're not going to see each other again for a long time? Junpei felt just as June did. He wanted to be at her side through whatever trials they were preparing to face. But he knew if they were going to survive, he had to swallow his feelings. In order for the six of them to move forward, he and June had to be separated. He looked at June. He was scared to lose her, but he swallowed, steeled his resolve, and did his best to smile. Hey, come on, you're making it sound like we're never going to see each other again. We gotta split up, for, but only for a while. This is just like when we went into the four and five doors, remember? We got split up then too, but we all met back up. I'll bet seven and eight are just like that. You mean they're connected somewhere? Yeah, probably. Probably? She didn't sound very hopeful. It was Seven that interjected. I'm sure they're going to connect somewhere. Why? What makes you think so? If they don't connect, neither team can get through door nine. In other words, the game would end right here. Zero's been on top of his shit so far. I don't think he'd blow it now. I'm damn sure that son of a bitch wants to have his fun as long as possible. He's not going to end this game until we get through the nine door. June said nothing. The tears were gone, but her eyes were still sad as they looked at Junpei. He met them, and with what reassurance he could manage, laid his hand gently on her shoulder. Everything's gonna be fine. We're gonna see each other again. I promise. June bit her lip and gave him an almost imperceptible nod. Yes. Promise? Her voice was barely above a whisper. Santa's voice shattered the moment. Oh, you guys are done, right? He stretched and continued. <sighs> anyway, that's pretty much it. Clover and I will both go into separate groups. I figure I'll take eight and Clover can take seven. Any problems with that, Clover? Clover looked away and was silent for a moment. Whatever. It was more of a dismissal than an agreement, but Santa didn't seem to care. Alright, we're ready to go then. Let's move! At Santa's command, the group split and headed for their respective doors. Clover, Seven, and Junpei walked towards door seven. Santa, Lois, and June have headed for door eight. For a long moment, they stood in front of the door. Seven took a deep breath. 
You guys ready? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's go. The door had opened. A narrow hallway stretched out before them. Seven and Clover leapt through the door. The moment they did, their bracelets beeped. The detonators in their bracelet had been activated. Junpei stepped forward to follow them. But as he was about to step over the threshold, he stopped. He looked to his right, towards door eight. June stood there, a mirror image of Junpei. She turned and looked towards him. Their eyes met. They nodded. Their farewell took almost 1.5 seconds. Then someone took hold of Junpei's arms and hauled him bodily through the door. He heard the sound of the number door slam shut behind him. His bracelet gave a cold electronic beep. Only 81 seconds left. No time to waste, guys. Let's get moving. Seven led the way down the hallway. Junpei and Clover followed him as fast as they could. After what seemed like far more than 81 seconds, they reached the end of the hall. To the left of the wooden door, they found the dead. There was no time to rest or catch their breath. All three slammed their hands in quick succession over the scanner panel on the dead. Still trying to catch his breath, Seven leaned heavily against the wall. It stopped. It stopped. <laughs> his smile seemed forced and a little crooked. This is the second time we've gone through one of these numbered doors, but... <laughs> you never really get used to it. He stood up straight, no longer out of breath, and wiped some of the sweat from his head and neck. Clover smirked at him. I would have thought a guy your size would have had bigger balls than that. What? What the hell did you just say? Say it again. I dare you. You have no... You you little... You want to die? I'd like to see you try, you fucking brat. All right, let's go. Hey, hey, calm down, guys. This isn't the time for this. It's not going to do us any good. <sighs> Gosh. Junpei sighed. Sometimes he wondered if the doors and the puzzles were really the greatest challenge they faced. Wait here for a minute, all right? I'm going to go see if there are any other doors. They didn't respond, but Junpei wasn't in the mood for a conversation anyway. <clears throat> First, he examined the inner part of the numbered door. It was, of course, shut tight. On the left was a single short hallway that terminated almost immediately at a, thick, at a thick iron wall. Junpei doubted the wall could be moved. At last, he gave up and returned to Seven, who was tapping lightly on the wooden door. This door is the only option we got, right? Yep, looks like it. There was a metal pla plaque bolted above the door. It read, Operating Room. It w if it was to be believed, the room on the other side of the door was an operating room. Something about it made Jinpei feel... nervous. Well, there's no point in standing around. Might as well go in and see what's waiting for us. Seven grabbed the brass knob and slowly opened the door. The creak of the hinge sounded like the groan of an old woman. A chill snaked its way down Junpei's spine. Quickly, he gathered what courage he could and took the first step into the room. Seven followed, with Clover right behind him. <clears throat> Part of the room, just past the door, was obscured by a screen. Clover's curiosity got the better of her, and she darted past Junpei to peer around the screen. Screaming noise? Her scream nearly blew out Junpei's eardrums. He and Seven ran towards Clover to see what had frightened her. They rounded the screen and the cause of her outburst was immediately clear. W what the hell is this? Is, is this a corpse? It was something that looked kind of like a human lying across some sort of bed. No, not a bed. An operating table. The table sat on a rusty steel lift and a cluster of bright operating lights shone down on it from the ceiling. Slowly they approached. 
As they got closer to the body, it became clear that it wasn't a body at all. What the hell? It's just a huge doll or something. A d -d -d doll? Clover did not look terribly comforted. Slowly, she approached the operating table and looked as intently as possible, from as far away as possible, at the thing. <laughs> Junpei could see her relax. You're right. It's only a doll. Man, it really scared me. She heaved a great sigh of relief and wiped a few drops of sweat from her forehead. Seven smirked. <laughs> well, I guess it would have been weird if you actually had any bull. If you actually had any bulls. Shut it! Don't you start with me, fatty! Oh, what's this? You want a penis of me, short stuff? Yeah, bring it on, you whale! Hey, got <sighs> Not again, okay? Seriously, knock it off. <clears throat> Junpei sighed and shook his head. Anyway, it looks like he's got something the two of you could stand to have a little more of. I'm talking about a heart. Huh? Ah, oh, this? You mean on his chest? Yeah. It was set up a little higher than normal for a human body, but from the shape of the organ, there could be no doubt that it was a heart. Why would there be a heart in a doll? I don't think it's a doll. You think maybe it's, like, a medical mannequin or something? Or maybe it's got more personal uses. Seven's grin was more than a little perverted. Clover glared at him. Anyway, how about we take a look around this place? Let's go. Okay. Sure thing. Seek a way out. I don't know why, but randomly I would like to reiterate that I fucking love this game. Are those scissors? They look kind of funny. No, that's probably a pair of kosher forceps. Surgeons use them during operations. They can hold blood vessels strut and keep the tissue out of the way. You can use it to pull stuff out of small holes or something like that. Another medical mannequin? From the looks of it, this one's a chick. She has a name, too. Lucy. Poor thing. Looks like Miss Lucy only has a head and a left arm. Maybe we're supposed to gather all of her parts. I just looked at it. What's this thing? It's got these short iron legs. Maybe it's a heater. There's nothing inside it. Ew, that's gross. This thing's the chest. It's a woman's chest. The heart's gone, but it's pretty hot. If that kind of thing turns you on, Seven, you're a real creepo. Maybe you're supposed to heat something like that gauze to kill the bacteria. There's a boiling thingy over there. There's nothing on the lid or in the drawers. The drawer is empty. Yeah, nothing there. There are a whole bunch of bottles on the shelves. They all look like medicine. They've got labels, but they're all big medical words I don't understand. There's nothing on the lower shelf. It's a chemical closet. Looks like it's locked. Guess we're gonna need a key for this one. A scalpel that's not rusty. Seems like it was put here for a reason, huh? You think it's telling us to cut something? Yeah, I do. An internal, an internal organ, specifically a lung. So we took the organ thingy out of the chest thingy. It's a lung, not an organ thingy. Huh? This part here on the back, it's all rubbery. You're right. So, it's a fake organ, of course it'd be... Wait, what's Seven grabbing it for? Hey, it feels like there's something in here. You think we can cut through the rubber part? Hint. Hint! Let's try cutting this organ with a scalpel. Organ key. There's a key in this organ. Found a key in an internal organ. Awesome, it's unlocked. 
It looks like there's something inside that bottle. Why don't you try pouring some out of the cap? Can't see any reason why not. What's that? It's bright blue. Do you think it's alien blood? <sighs> Where the hell did that come from? Then what do you think it is, Seven? I don't know, some sort of some sort of special bath soap. <sighs> what a boring guess. This thing won't open. Is it locked? You probably need to put in a passcode. I mean, geez, they've even got a keypad on there. How much more obvious can you get? I can only enter in three numbers. E is for enter and C is clear. Once you input the number, press E. If you mess up, press C. Let's give it a shot. Three, four, seven. All right, I'll figure it out later. I did not mean to click on that. It looks like there's something inside that bottle. Why don't you try pouring some out in the cap? Can't see any reason why not to. What's that? It's bright red. Do you think it's blood? No, blood's thicker than that. Then what is it? Beats me. There's a note on the top of the table. Iron one, salt two, water three. Carbon dioxide question mark, ammonia question mark, ethanol question mark. What do you think this is a hint for? Maybe it's got something to do with this box. And it does. Junpei, there's a bottle of iron powder on the shelf. How do you know it's iron? The label says FE. FE stands for iron, right? Hey Junpei, do you think there are any slugs on this ship? Huh? Well, if there are, I was wondering if we could put... I was thinking we could put salt on them. What's she pointing at? The label states NACL. Salt, huh? Do you think Seven will shrivel up if we put it on him? Hey, you say something? A rectangular table. I wonder, did people mix medicine on this thing? Uh, but let me read this. Two water, three. But dioxide, ammonia, ethanol. I'm gonna look at the first line. Maybe question mark represents a number. Hmm? Something stinks. Is it coming from this bottle? It says NH3. Well, of course that stinks. It's ammonia. It's a bottle of ammonia on the shelf. It says NH3 on the label. That's four. Ho, 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 good stuff. Let's go for a drink. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that bottle. It says C2H5OH, right? It's ethanol. That's right. It's also known as ethyl alcohol. It's pretty much what booze is made of. So, you're gonna drink it? Nah, I won't. I might say that's what it is on the label, but there could be anything in there. Not to mention, pure ethyl alcohol will fucking kill you. Hey Junpei, there's dihydrogen monoxide on the shelf. Why don't you just say, water? What's this? Looks like a can with a, or looks like a can with a spray nozzle. It says CO2. So it's a can filled with carbon dioxide? So it's a can filled with carbon dioxide. So dioxide, ammonia, ethanol. Look at that. Three, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Lockbox. Looks like you have to push the passcode on the keyboard if you want to open it. I can only enter three numbers, blah, 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 blah. All right. Three, four, eight. There we go. I feel like it was 348 for some reason. Like the numbers were wrong once. Anyway. A heart. This thing is super creepy. This ain't good for the heart. It's the right arm of the body. It's kind of creepy. You think we should go back? Yeah, I think that's probably best. Clover nodded and left. Junpei was about to follow her when he realized that Seven wasn't following suit. Hey Seven, what's up? Oh, well... He looked up at Junpei distractedly, and then back down at the brown bottle he held cupped in his large hands. What's that? In response, Seven tossed the bottle gently to Junpei. He caught it and twisted it around to read the label. 
Ethylene di diamine tartrate. EDT. It's tartrate. It's tartaric ethylene. Ethylene diamine. What kind of medicine is that? It's not a medicine. I think it's an industrial strength detergent. Why would they have something like that here? Well, probably to clean stuff up. Clean what up? Fuck if I know. Still, it looks like it's cleaned my brain up. <clears throat> Jinpei looked up from the bottle. You remember something? Seven nodded slowly and spoke. Well, I remember a story about EDT. It happened about 50 years ago. There was this factory somewhere in America making big old EDT crystals. They were making it to sell as industrial strength cleaner, like I told you before. But... A year after the factory started up, something strange started happening with the crystals they were building. Water molecules started attaching themselves to the EDT crystals. This made them into sort of a mutation of the original crystals called a hydrate. Once the crystal turns into a hydrate, though, it's useless as a cleaner. The factory had to just dump the crystals as a hydrate. They were useless. But it didn't end there. After that day, the same thing started happening in EDT factories everywhere. Even ones now nowhere near the first American factory. They'd be making crystals the same way, with the same materials and the same equipment and environment. But now, all of a sudden, every single crystal they formed turned into a hydrate. <clears throat> in fact, ever since that day, no factory anywhere has been able to make a pure EDT crystal. Even in EDT research done years before, they had never gotten a hydrate. But after it happened at the first factory, it just spread. It was like... Man, how do you say it? Like the molecules were communicating with one another. Transmitting information in a way humans couldn't perceive. This phenomena spread throughout the world. Right? Junpei looked up at Seven with half a smirk. Seven stared at him, dumbfounded. Yeah, that, that's it exactly, but... How did you know? I heard another story kind of like that one. When? In the freezer. What? In the freezer? Junpei told Seven the story he had heard from, heard from June in the freezer in the kitchen. How one day glycerin began to crystallize, and the story of ice that wouldn't melt at room temperature. <coughs> Pardon me. I needed some water because throat is dying. <laughs> When Junpei was done, Seven looked thoughtful and absent thoughtful and absentmindedly rubbed the scar on his chin. Ice that doesn't melt at room temperature, huh? Sound familiar? Yeah, hold up. I feel like I can remember something. It's it's right there. Seven squinted. His eyes stared off into space as if he were trying desperately to focus on something far away. Do you Do you know about Ice Nine? No, not yet. Not yet. Ice nine? Ice nine, ice nine. Ice, ice, ice. Suddenly, Seven's, Seven's eyes shot open. That's it! I remember it now! Now is a good place to save and end the video. Alright. Next time on 999. Nine, nine. Stuff happens.